Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal, and we are joined by Lisa Gibellario, a prevention specialist with Wayside Youth and Family Support Network, and she's also the coordinator of the Belmont Wellness Coalition. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. Today, we're talking about recent events in Washington, D.C. We were all shocked when a mob attacked the U.S. Capitol last Wednesday as Congress was reviewing the electoral votes. Lisa, should parents be talking with their kids about this? Absolutely, yes. Parents and guardians definitely need to make themselves available to listen to their kids, to offer reassurance, and just to be a safe landing space for kids. The reality, Mike, is, is that most kids, at least in elementary school and up, are aware that concerning events unfolded last week. Therefore, it's best for parents to be available and to be as honest and as direct with their kids as they possibly can. So beyond that, Lisa, is there any specific guidance that you can give parents as they consider talking with their children? Yes, and in fact, Mike, my research um, showed that there's a lot of information out there for parents. So, and this, and this what I'm about to go through, these strategies, for talking with children come from, you know, school shootings and other disturbing um, things that, that we have had to deal with over the last decade or more. So basically the strategies do differ depending on the age of the children, of course. Um, parents want to be sure that they are being developmentally age appropriate, but overall um, what surfaced in my research was first and foremost to check in with your kids, to be available, as I said, um, to ask them about their thoughts and feelings and concerns. And first and foremost, just to be a place to listen and to validate. So if they said they felt scared, you can validate that. You know, do the reflective listening. Um, so that's first and foremost. And then where you can, offer reassurance, especially with younger children. Reassure them that they are safe. Um, you may get asked about your feelings as a, as a parent or caregiver and be honest, if you were upset, say it. If you were scared, angry, name your feelings. I wouldn't go into, so, you know, great So Lisa, that, that, that kind of raised my, 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 my next question about that. And that, that is, you know, to what extent should we talk about our own fears? So I think what the experts say, Mike, is it's absolutely appropriate for parents to name their fears. So what that means is if you felt scared, um, if you are concerned, it's perfectly appropriate to say that. But depending on the age of your children, you, you may not want to go into layers and layers about your fear and your concern. It may be too much for your kids to handle where you're at because of course they're trying to handle where they are at. So you can answer the question honestly, say if you were upset, scared, sad, angry, but not to really vent to your children. So naming, not venting is what the experts say on that one. Lisa. Um, how can parents manage their kids' fear and anxiety about the potential for other acts of violence? Well, be, I have a couple more strategies, if I may, and, and then, oh, then I'll get to that one. Um, so uh, we've gone through a few. And then um, additionally, I just wanted to say that the advice from experts is to look for the lessons. Um, so there are lessons here, right? Systemic racism, um, how a democracy typically transfers power. Um, so we, want to, we may want to name some of those lessons that, that come up with what happened last week. Um, I would say to tell your, especially your younger kids, to take a line from Fred Rogers, which is look for the helpers. Um, there were some amazing stories that came out of last week of bravery, of courage um, that happened in the Capitol. And I think that it's good to acknowledge that with our kids. I would also advise parents to reach out to teachers, find out how this is being discussed um, in the classroom setting. And therefore you will be able to reinforce perhaps some principles that are being talked about or fill in the gaps if things are not being talked about. And finally, Mike, we've, we've said this before, um, we want to limit our exposure to the media right now. Look, we have COVID-19 raging. We are in a second wave surge. The news is dire. We have what happened last Wednesday afternoon. We have many other concerning stories out there. 
with kids of all ages and for adults, um, limit your exposure. Get what you need to get and do not leave the TV or radio on and on and on. And finally, keep your family routines, even in the midst of, of concerning events. If you typically go for a family walk before dinner, do that. You know, if you typically all have breakfast together or play Scrabble on Thursday nights, continue with those family routines. We know that kids find security in the family routines. In thinking about the potential for future acts of violence, how can we work with our kids' fear and anxiety around that? So for, for the ongoing concerns that we have, um, first and foremost, again, make yourself available. Uh, you can embrace your role as an adult that can guide your kids through these really dark times. And I will underscore the fact, Mike, that if you are not connecting with your kids right now, if your kids are teenagers and, and they're not exactly looking to you, identify another caring adult. It doesn't have to be you. Your kids need a safe place to go and a safe place to get information and share feelings, but it's perfectly okay if it's another trusted caring adult, an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent, a neighbor, a coach. Um, so I would also advise parents as, as we you know, are still in turbulent times is to talk to teachers and pediatricians to get resources. There are lots of resources out there, as I said. Um, so get some advice in how to, in how to target what might be most helpful to you um, because there, there is a vast amount of information in how to talk with kids. Um, Again, remind them to look for the helpers, you know, find the silver linings where you can. Um, and if you feel hopeful about the future, I think it's okay to share that too. Um, look, what I shared with my kids was true for me, which is that I told them, and they're older, but I told them that our country has been through rough times in the past, many rough times. We are in one now without a doubt. Um, long, you know, long seated issues of, of social justice and systemic racism have finally come to light. Um, in addition to what we witnessed last week, in addition to one of the deadliest pandemics, but our country has also come through those dark times. So it's perfectly okay to find a little hope, to find a little brightness, um, but again, be available, uh, set aside maybe even a weekly, bi-weekly time to have these conversations. And again, if you're not the right person because of where you're, you know, you have a preteen or teen, that's okay. Identify someone where they can turn. Well, thank you, Lisa. That, that is really great advice. And we will get through this. And um, that's, that's important to communicate with our kids. So thank you. And, and we will talk with you next time, Lisa. Thank you, Mike.